my bunnies, it's Tiki's Trinkets here, and today I have for y'all another polymer clay tutorial. Before I show you the tutorial real quick, I just want to let y'all know that next week will be Block Cat Theater, which is another character from another game that somebody requested. But after that, I'm going to stop taking requests for a little while on YouTube so I can try to do some art that I want to put out or original art that I want to put out. Just because I feel like I spent most of this year just doing fan art, or at least a good chunk of the year. <clears throat> Excuse me, allergies. And I just want to get back to my roots and do some rabbits or some dragons, something that I really, really enjoy. So, thank you guys so much for understanding. And I'm sure you guys won't mind. I think you'll still very much enjoy whatever I'm making. Still feel free to put suggestions in. But I probably won't get to them except for maybe once a month from now on. So if somebody requests something as a tutorial, I'll probably do it once a month and I will let the person know when it is up. Speaking of tutorial requests, this itself was a tutorial request to make cotton candy garnet, which I'll show you in just a second, but this was a request by... Let's hope I remember to actually put your name here and not just hold my hands up like a ding ding. And she wanted me to make cotton candy garnet, he or she, sorry not sure <clears throat> anywho and this was the final outcome of cotton candy garnet and it is so big that I can barely fit it in the actual camera zone area here and get close enough for you to see these fine little details like let me just boop try to refocus it I'm trying to get you to see her mouth because it's really hard to see it in the video too but her mouth is these little lips and then there's two lines to the side too and then you'll see in the video how I make the texturing for the little smile slash frown lines too <laughs> anywho you'll see how to make it in the video I'm pretty happy with how she came out for the most part nothing is ever going to be perfect when it's handmade the only thing I'm not too happy about is when I added this clay here to well yeah this clay to cover up the neck seam I had to blend it and when I blended it, for some reason, this particular color in Primo does not like blending. And it kind of just would not blend as much as I wanted it to. It's blended, but as you can see, like, right there how it dips. It's just not quite as smooth as everything else. But everything else came out super, super deliciously good. <laughs> Delicious. And I put her on another star base, just like I did with, um... Rainbow Quartz 2.0. I don't think I made a tutorial for him. Oh no, I did. I should know my own videos. I just couldn't remember if I did or didn't. I knew I listened to my Etsy, but I couldn't remember if I made a tutorial. But I did, and you can go watch that on my Polymer Clay tutorial, um, what do you call it, playlist on my channel. I can't remember nothing to write tonight. Oh my gosh. Or if I, if I did make it, it should be on my Steven Universe playlist, too. I'm sorry. I'm having a night. It is literally Friday night, so I'm coming to you pretty much shortly before uploading. I am just terrible about getting things done when I say I'm going to. <laughs> but anyways, really happy with how she came out. Block Cat Theater character is coming next week. Not going to be taking requests for a while, so I can try to do some stuff I want to do. And I think that's pretty much it. Other than that, I also wanted to show y'all, not my chins, oh lord, you don't want to see that, our Christmas tree, if you can see it over there, I hope you can see it. Well, let me just awkwardly take you around the room. <laughs> Look at it, it's so cute, and it says let it snow behind the tree, and then the tree itself, gorgeous, okay, okay, that's enough, ah, about to run into the tripod. That's enough of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna try to plop y'all back up here. There we go. <laughs> that was a fun adventure, wasn't it? I want to actually kind of do more vlogs more often, but... Anywho, you're tired of hearing me talking. Let's get into this action. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in my video. Let's get into this. See you there! For this tutorial, you're going to need Chocolate Sculpey 3, Turquoise Primo, Lilac, Ballerina Pink, Candy Pink or Hot Pink, and Black.
If we need any other colors I forgot, I'll mention it later. First, we're going to start with the Candy Pink from Sculpey 3. And I'm going to pre-roll some of the balls that I need right now. This tutorial is going to be all over the place. And we're going to start with the largest one here that we're going to roll into a teardrop shape. And then we're going to cut this about 25, 75, keeping the smaller part at the bottom. The other piece you can put back in the pack for now. Then press it down with your thumb so it's nice and flat on the top and the bottom. Phew! Bless me. Woo! Big sneeze. <laughs> Next we're going to go on to this ball right here. And you're going to roll it into a very long teardrop shape. This is going to be a thigh, so you're going to cut it off at an angle at an angle and cut the bottom off flat. This is her right thigh. Then the part where it's angled, put it onto her torso. And the other pink ball, just leave it to the side for now and we're going on to the black color. We're going to go ahead and pre-roll some of the balls we need, which is these four right here. And we're going to make the other thigh, so we're going to start with this ball in the middle. And do a similar thing you just did, except make the angle at a different direction. Because this is going to be the left thigh, not the right thigh. Then after you do that, like I said, you can go ahead and stick it onto the body. And after you stick it onto the body, cut the little bit off at the bottom so that they're about the same length. Next, we're going to go on to the next ball that we had right here. And this is going to be one of her feet. This should be her her right foot. <laughs> and you're going to roll it into a long teardrop shape, similar to before, but a little bit different. Then you're going to pinch the top with your thumb and index finger so that it makes it flat and it makes it look like a shoe. Then to make it pointy, just pinch it with your thumb and index finger at the top. Then to get the pose that I did for her, I went on ahead and bent the knee right here. After you bend the knee, you're going to need to cut it off and make it flat. And then you can stick it onto the right thigh, which is the pink thigh right here. Then we're going to go on to the next ball of clay. This little boy. And just like before, we're going to roll it into a long teardrop shape like everything else. And then this is going to be her forearm, so you're going to cut off the bottom and the top. Then we're going to take the last ball, and this is going to be one of her hands. So you're going to take this little ball, and you're going to roll it into a teardrop shape. Like everything else in my life. Just teardrops everywhere. Then you're going to press it down flat. And then you're going to cut the little pointy bit off like so. Then they give her little fingers and thumbs, which I only do four, not five, because screw being anatomically correct. I just cut little triangles into each little indent to make it like she has fingers. Then I stick it on the wrist, and you're going to use some kind of blending tool or your fingers and very carefully blend it together. Now you should have this right here. Next, you're going to grab a toothpick and stick it inside the torso for structure. It should look like this. If it's too big, you can cut it down, or you can leave it full length for now to see how big your sculpture will be. Next, we're going on to the turquoise Primo Blue. And you're going to pre-roll all the balls you need, which is all these. We're going to work on three of them for now. The other three we'll come back to later. We're going to start with this big one in the front. <clears throat> And if you haven't already guessed, we're going to roll it into a teardrop shape. Voila. And then you're going to cut off the top and the bottom of it. So it'll look like this. And we're just going to keep the piece in the middle. The other pieces you can put back in your pack. Then just stick it onto the body. I do actually cut this down a little bit later because it was a little bit bigger than I needed it. But, you know, kind of feel it out as you go. If it's too big, cut it off. If it's not big enough, remake it. Next, we're moving on to this ball. You're going to roll it out into a little egg shape or oval shape, and then just stick it onto the toothpick. Now, in order to get the light pink ballerina pink on it, you're going to have to take it off and cut it at an angle. 
as you see right here, kind of cut it close to the stick and then just slide it down at an angle. It should look like this once you do that. If not, feel free to re-roll the ball again and try it again. Now we're going to go on to this other ball right here. This will be the last one for now. This is going to be the dress part that flows off of her shirt. I rolled it into kind of like an ovaly shape or an egg shape and then I'm going to roll it out flat with my X-Acto blade. Get it thin but not too thin. Then I kind of warped it into this three piece shape and then I cut it off flat and then I also took my X-Acto blades and cut off the sides as well. Then I took my, um, what do you call it, my blending tool and I indented lines for this but as you can see later on they kind of get destroyed after me touching and cleaning it so much. So if you want to do it, you can. If not, you don't have to. Also, this blue dot kind of got destroyed too, so don't worry about it if it's not perfect. We do the best we can here. And then I just stuck it on the body where it looked like it needed to be and blended it in. This will take a lot of time, so be patient. Next, we're going to move on to that ballerina pink I was telling you about. And we're just going to roll out two balls for that. It doesn't take much. As you can see, the size is right here. Then the slightly larger one, we're going to start with that, roll it into an egg-like shape. And then this is going to be the upper half of her torso, so cut this at the opposite angle that you cut the blue piece. That way you can stick it together like a puzzle piece, as you can see right here. This might take a few times, but just be patient and do the best you can. Next we're going on to the other pink piece, which we're going to roll into a teardrop shape. Surprise, surprise. And then you're going to cut off the bottom of it and the top of it at an angle so that she has a nice little sleeve. This is her right arm, so we're going to stick this on her upper torso, like so. Next, we're going to go on to the light sky blue, I think is what it's called, from Sculpey 3. And you're going to roll out two balls. This is going to be for her sleeve and her little decoration on her pink sleeve. First, we're going to do the regular sleeve that's on her left arm. Roll it into a teeny weeny teardrop shape and ignore the blurry photo. Then just press it against your work surface so it'll be flat on the bottom. And then all you're going to do is just smush it onto the blue part of her upper torso, like so. Perfect. Then we're going to go on to the other ball, which you're going to, which is this little ball right here. <laughs> then you're going to take your X-Acto blade and roll it out nice and thin. I mean, as thin as you can get it. And then you'll want to cut it using your long blade or an X-Acto tool into a long rectangle, about an inch in length is what I did. And then I just cut a little leaf shape using the little rounded tool right there. And then the rounded piece should be on top, just kind of wrap it around the arm. Perfect. Next we're going on to her skin tone, which I used chocolate brown color Sculpey 3. I used to do a custom blend for garnet skin color, but I just got lazy with it. It still looks just as good. We're going to pre-roll all the balls you need right here. And we're going to start with this teeny weeny little one right here. This is going to be her collarbone piece. I just took this ball, flattened it out, and after I flattened it, I picked it up and pinched it on both sides to make a diamond shape. And then I just stuck it on the toothpick. After you stick it on the toothpick, we're going to go back to the black real quick. And you're going to take one little tiny ball and roll it out nice and flat. And then you're going to cut a very small rectangular piece to cover up her little skin on the collarbone. Collarbone. Excuse me. And it should kind of start where the blue is on her outfit, like so. You'll notice later on that I kind of messed it up, but... I fixed it by blending it. That's all you have to do is blend things to fix it. And that's how it should look on the back as well. Next we're going on to the other brown piece of clay, the one that was a little bit up from that one. And you're going to roll this one into a teardrop shape like we did before. And just like before, you're going to cut off the top and the bottom, just leaving a piece that's about a half an inch in length. This is going to be her neck. I did cut this down a little bit shorter because it was a little too long. Just stick it onto the teardrop shape, or excuse me, the toothpick, and then blend it into the collarbone. We're going to go on to the next ball down here. This is going to be her other leg, her left leg. 
So you're going to roll it, and similar to like we did with the right one, you're going to take this long, very long teardrop shape, pick up the rounded end, and pinch it between your thumb and index. But we're not going to pinch this one into a point, because this is her foot hanging out. So just leave it as it is, and then bend it, and then just cut it and put it in place, like so. Then after you do that, you'll get your exacto blade and just indent lines for the toes. Also, you can see where I showed the line here where it kind of got messed up and how I'm going to like fix it later. Just so I can kind of keep that in mind. Then I indented the toes. Next, we're going to go on to the next ball of clay, which will be this little one right here. This is just going to be her elbow on her left arm. So I just rolled it into a very small cylinder shape kind of like a teardrop shape and cut off the top and the bottom and then just bent it at the middle using that dotting tool then sticking one end into the arm and the other end with a wire into it into the other part of the arm the wire and glue is for support you're gonna need it next I went on to both these two balls which you're gonna roll one of them the bigger one into a long teardrop shape And then you're going to cut off the top and the bottom. This is going to be her forearm on the other side. Then kind of bend it just like you did with the elbow piece just a minute ago. Now the other ball is coming back into play. Roll it into a small teardrop shape, like so. And this is going to be her hand. So you're going to press down the top of it with your index finger. Then you're going to cut off the excess and indent the little fingers, like so. Perfect, right? And then, just like you did with the other hand, you're going to stick it onto the wrist and then blend it together. Again, blurry, but it still looks good. Then, using a piece of wire and some glue, do the exact same thing you did on the other side. Just stick it in the arm and glue it to the arm. Next, we're going to go on to the second to last, I think it was, ball of clay. These last two right here, the one piece is going to be her head. So you're going to take that big ball, press it down gently so it will still be pretty round on the top. Then pick it up and pinch it between your index and thumb and press it against your work surface. So one side will stay round at the top, but the other pieces will be flat. Once you do that, it should look like this. The round piece is going to be her chin area. So you can go ahead and stick that onto her neck and make sure everything looks proportionally right. And it looks good. Then the other little piece, you're just going to stick it on her face, like so. And then you're going to take your X-Acto blade and run a line through the lips to make them look like lips. Then I took a pointed tool and just indented it in the middle of the mouth. And then I also took this rounded tool to make the frown lines I talked about at the beginning. Then I also took the line and I stretched it out to the frown line just to make it give her more expression. And that's what it ended up looking like. Next, we're going to go back to that turquoise blue just for a moment, just so we can fix that little piece at the top. Just lay another little rectangular piece over the top to the back, just like we did the black. And then you want to get your blending tool or your thumb or something and blend it all together. I could not get this line to go out of this turquoise blue. This turquoise holds everything. But I did my best. Now we're finally going to go on to her hair, which we're going to have these two big balls first. Roll them out into very rounded, thin squares. You can make a little thicker than I did. They were about two a centimeter or two centimeters in, in height, but you can make it a little bit thicker. Just cut off the sides, smush them together, lay the body down on top of the hair and kind of run your exacto blade or long blade over it to kind of create the shape. Once you create the shape to make sure her head will fit, just go ahead and carve that out using whatever tool you have. It should look like this. Again, if your colors didn't mix together, put them back in the pack and reuse them. Then I went on ahead and took my exacto blade and blended those in nice and neat together. Now we're finally going to these last two blue balls from earlier. You're going to take the first bigger one, roll it out nice and thin, and then I just kind of cut a cloud-like shape and just stuck it on the hair using a reference photo to know what our hair looked like. The slightly smaller ball, I just rolled it into an oval shape and stuck it on the bottom of her hair. And this is what the final piece looked like. Cute!
if you followed along with that. <laughs> then I just used rubbing alcohol and cotton swabs to clean her off and make sure she was nice and tidy. After that, you're going to go ahead and bake, and I'll give you instructions on how long to bake for right here. Now that she's out of the oven and cooled off, I got Loctite glue and three beads for her eyes and two tiny ones that were purple for her hands. And just dab on a very small amount of glue and glue her down. Then I also glued her to her base. I had to use super glue instead of E6000 because I was in a rush. I also glazed her with polycrylic floor varnish, which is right here. And after that, after two coats of glaze and everything's dry and good, you're done. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in next week's video. Bye-bye, my bunnies.